Welcome back to the final episode of Witches, Ghosts, and Goblins and another episode of Susie Reads. Today, Polly and Oliver will go home after completing all of their tasks. And do you remember last time Miranda married the king of the goblins? She's the goblin queen. <laughs> anyway, and Imp has become the royal imp. So, shall we read and find out how the story ends? Let's get started. Chapter 15, Home Again. This is the Hannon's house, remember? It hasn't changed a bit since you first saw it, except this particular morning it may look better than before. It's the kind of morning that makes everything look better. The sun has never shone so brightly. The rays burned away the early mist, which was heavier than usual, but the dew still sparkles on the flowers and the grass. The apple tree in the backyard is in full bloom. The milkman, who has just delivered the Hannah's milk, broke off a twig of blossoms, though he really shouldn't have, and tucked it into his cap. He made a mistake too. He left the Hannans one more quart of milk than they ordered. He's a milkman who never makes mistakes. One can't help wondering why he left an extra quart of milk today. Home again. Polly, Oliver, time to get ready for breakfast. It was Mr. Hannon's voice. Polly stirred, stretched, and slowly opened her eyes. What a surprise. She was not in the apartment in the land of the goblins at all. It was her own room at home. Those were her curtains fluttering the breeze and her toys and books on the shelves. She closed her eyes and tried to remember the return trip home. Had they stopped by Miranda's mysterious castle? Had she said goodbye to the newly found cactus and her three beautiful kittens? Had she thanked Miranda and the King of the Goblins for inviting Oliver and her to come back and visit them? It was most strange. She had a hazy memory of someone calling to her in the night and some instructions whispered in her ear. Now don't tell your parents where you were or they may not let you return. Remember that they've been under my dreamy spell and have not missed you at all. Clearly, Miranda's magic had been at work. Oliver and she had been whisked home while they were asleep. She could hear him clattering down the stairs. How could he be hungry after all the wedding cake and ice cream? But then Oliver was always hungry. Polly dressed for breakfast and she reviewed her wonderful adventures. What an exciting time it had been. She only wished she had been awake enough to bring back some souvenir, the long party dress perhaps, or a picture of the imp, or even a piece of the wedding cake. Polly, it was her father's voice again. We're waiting for you. She hurried down the stairs and slid into her place at the breakfast table. Everyone, even Oliver said, good morning, just as though nothing at all had happened. She winked at Oliver but he was busy spreading jam on his toast and didn't seem to see her. May I have some more milk, Mom, he asked. Mrs. Hannon went to the refrigerator. All out, she said. Thank goodness this is milk delivery day. She opened the kitchen door. Five bottles, she remarked. Now I wonder why the milkman left one more than I ordered. Polly sighed. How could everyone talk about such ordinary things when such extraordinary things had happened to Oliver and her. Or could it have all been a dream? How she would hate that. No Miranda, no Imp, no Ghost Valley, no King of the Goblins, except in a dream. It was too terrible to think about. Just then she heard a noise. It was at the kitchen door and it was a faint scratching sound. Both Oliver and she ran to the door and opened it. There before them, on the porch floor was a small black kitten with a tiny white star-like mark on its forehead. It simply had to be one of Cactus's kittens. 
Polly bent down and picked it up. The kitten nestled in her arms and started purring. May we keep it, Oliver and she asked together. It probably belongs to someone, her father said. It may have just strayed away, her mother added. But at least we have milk enough to feed the hungry little thing. It's as though the milkman knew we'd be needing extra milk. If no one comes to claim it, may we keep it, Oliver asked. Their parents nodded. And no one would claim it, Polly told them, because it's a special gift for us. What shall we name it, Oliver asked. Its claws are like little needles, Polly said. Let's name it Little Cactus. She looked at Oliver and he looked at her, then he winked. Little Cactus, he said, and stroked the kitten. No one is ever going to have to search for you because we'll never lose you. Polly smiled. One adventure had ended and another had begun. She wondered how she would send a thank you note to Miranda. It had all been so much fun. And that is the end of Witches, Ghosts, and Goblins. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you can make this a tradition for you to read this every Halloween. See you next time on Susie Reads.